That should be a heck of a matchup to watch as we take a look at the uh, Baylor Bears starting lineup. Lester Bedford, Kenny Cherry, Royce O'Neal, Rico Gathers, and Jonathan Motley, the freshman. For Bob Huggins, West Virginia Mountaineers, they will go, of course, at the beginning without the state. So it'll be Javon Carter, Dexter Miles, along with Jonathan Holton, Nathan Adrian, and Devin Williams. And uh, Fred, let, let me go back to the state and the story. Without him on the lineup now, who will Huggins rely on today? Well, he's got those two freshman guards, Dexter Miles Jr. and Javon Carter, Jay Sean Page, Tariq Phillip off the bench. All of these players have had a great deal of experience in that press Virginia defense this year because of how much he rotates them. So they press from beginning to end, the Mountaineers. And keep in mind that the Bears beat them twice during the regular season and in pretty dominant fashion. If I recall, Rico Gathers went for two double-doubles, 17 points in both games, 17 rebounds in the first one, and 10 in the second. So if there's any point of emphasis for Coach Huggins today, it's how we're going to handle Mr. Gathers. Oh, no question about it. And at the last uh, meeting, Baylor only turned it over eight times against that pressure. Baylor with the first possession, and here we go. Brent, this is why Baylor handles pressure so well, because they start two point guards, but O'Neal can handle the ball just as effectively. Attacking is Motley with the game's first field goal. Jonathan Motley, redshirt freshman from Houston. And we're in Baylor now. We're going to see this 1-1-3 zone defense. The key to watch is how those guards try to keep the ball out of the high post area. Searching for a shooter on their first possession, and they find an open man in underneath, but he didn't pull the trigger quickly, and they have turned it over. I thought he should have gone right up. I agree, and what you saw there, too, is the six foot seven Holton posting up those little guards in the foul line area. Look for that early. So against the West Virginia pressure, we'll see how Baylor handles it. Obviously, they were not troubled during the regular season very much having won both of those games, so they get it up easily here. With 20-some on the shot clock on attack, and fouled is Kenny Cherry. One thing you've seen early from Baylor is spreading that West Virginia half-court defense out and driving it. Ball out of bounds. Our officials, John Higgins, Mark Whitehead, Terry Oglesby, veteran crew here. And First of four quarterfinals. What a day at the Sprint Center. Lester Medford handling in the backcourt. He's number 11. And he has turned it over. Baylor gets back quickly defensively, however. Watch that high post area and see if you can get one of those big guys in there. Knocked away from Williams. Loose on the ball battle out of bounds. He captured the ball of gathers went down rather hard and uh, he was on the end line with the basketball as uh, Scott Drew keeping a very close eye on his big man who was shaken up just a touch. Inbounds play Williams attacks off the dribble and it's Baylor basketball. Dangerous but O'Neal scores beautiful catch and score. Right on the money. Nice delivery by Cherry. We call that a lay it, on, lay it out front pass. I think there's an emergency. I think Staten should check in. <laughs> <laughs> See how they're posting up in the middle of that zone right there. Here's Carter. Quick. Boy, they moved their feet on that zone, Fran. They miss on the three into little Cherry's hands. Cherry, one of the fine point guards in the Big 12. O'Neal's going to hit the three. No. But he had it down, and a foul is going to go against Jonathan Motley. Watch this pass, Brent. We call it the lay it out front, right over the top of the defense. Perfectly timed. Nice catch by Royce O'Neal. It's been difficult for West Virginia to get open looks. I mean, Williams had the muscle for that shot. Devin Williams, he's a sophomore from Cincinnati.
good penetration. Haven't finished, however, and a foul is going to go against West Virginia. Motley battling for the rebound was fouled. You're looking at two of the best offensive rebounding teams in the country, and Baylor already pounding that offensive glass, Brent. You know, it's interesting uh, with Coach uh, Scott Drew. He always has a big man. As I uh, take a look at Motley playing in this game, they missed the three, and Devin Williams for the rebound. Now, open floor for Page. Can he do anything with it? Yes. But then he misses the shot. Had an easy layup, and uh, foul is going to be called. And Page got out there in transition with the left hand. And again, you talk about uh, he and Tariq Phillip off the bench, along with those freshman guards. They have to pick up the slack. That's a big foul on Motley being number two, so I imagine that Scott's going to take him out here early. He's got a couple of subs up already to come in for Baylor. And did I hear you say that Scott Drew always has a big man? <laughs> How about a few? I think I underspoke. <laughs> you, go, you go back to Epe Udo and Quincy Aceed. Yeah, exactly. Isaiah That's Austin, yep, Corey Jefferson, they're just going to roll them out. And you know what they do? They get better in practice. That's why you see guys like Gathers and Motley making so much progress. And so there was a violation. O'Neal. Now watch this. And uh, that was a violation on the page of West Virginia. So it'll be ball out of bounds on the lane violation. Page will come over, and Huggins is upset with that. And watch this pressure, Brent. Jonathan Holton, 6'7", guarding Cherry. But see, Baylor has the ability of having O'Neal handle the basketball so well. Torian Prince, the sixth man of the year, has checked in for Baylor. He's number 21, so he brings in size off that pair of bench that Fran was talking about. Sherry, uh, under pressure that time, decided to pull the trigger anyway. Well, there's that length of Holton. That's his sweet spot, Sherry, but Holton is challenging. Here's Miles, the freshman guard, played extremely well for the Mountaineers. The last few games coming down the stretch in the Big 12. Turn it over again. And a head man. Freeman has to bring it back out. Al Freeman, and uh, he's gone over the line and turned it over. A little bit sloppy here at the beginning, the early first of our four quarterfinal games. You know what I used to tell my teams when we played an 11.30 a.m. game? And I meant this. The team that wakes up the best will win. College guys like to sleep till noon or one or two. And so your mindset has got to be, we've got to be ready earlier than the opponent. Like an answers. <laughs> I was ready at 8 o'clock this morning. <laughs> I know you were too. <laughs> Elijah Macon is on the floor for the Mountaineers. So Huggins use a lot of players and they've turned it over again. Turnovers are plaguing them. That is the fourth of this game. But Baylor cannot take advantage of it here in the early going. And uh, Prince jumps in with a foul on the reception. Uh, that's not a foul he wants for sure. I, mean, I think that was pass interference. Exactly. Take a look right here now. You see Prince, he's trying to get the steal. He knocks Carter down. Carter, Prince just reaches down and picks him up. Good sportsmanship. This guy has become just a tremendous player. Back outside for the three ball and knocked down by the youngster Daxter Miles, the freshman from Baltimore. Puts the Mountaineers ahead. To regain the lead, rattles out. Diving for it, loose on the floor, picked up by the Bears. Gather yeah, can't, uh, can't get going here in the early going and uh, there's contact. Carter down on the floor, shaken up. He'll be helped up. We've got our media time out there near the 15-minute mark, and uh, Carter able to get up and go on over to the sideline. I'm out. It's team for Baylor, and he was rightly voted the sixth man of the year. He's one of the best players in the conference, Brent. We're going to see a lot of him next year as he becomes uh, an elite player. He already has. Baylor started, friends, two or two from the field. They've missed their last seven. Mountaineers with the lead and the and the basketball. Phillip has uh, checked in. Page 
And look, they've turned it over again. That's five early turnovers, but they get it right back this time. That open man's Miles stops it. That's good offense by West Virginia. Just turn it over, then steal it back. Back at the other end, can't get it to go. And finally, Ish Wainwright, the sophomore from right here in Kansas City, playing before a lot of his friends and family, taps it back in. Four of these young guards have really grown up during the season. No doubt they missed Staten and Brown, but these guys have come a long way. Philip thought about it. Now he turns it over again. That's a half dozen. Open man is Medford, and he's able to lay it in, and Baylor regains the lead, and Huggy Bear not too happy about that. We don't want two there because they're passing from there. All right? So make sure we stay matched up because everybody got it. All right, let's go. Hey, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Brad, what, uh, what does Scott mean, talk more? Well, you when you play this kind of zone defense, there's a lot of communication because you've got to cover different areas in the zone. And you see West Virginia trying to attack through the middle of the zone so far. And this defense has become really good because they communicate. Page will fire the three. Battle underneath, and coming away with it is Wainwright, and that follows on West Virginia. Now, when you think about it, Brent, this program at Baylor has come so far under Scott Drew. Twelfth year. Amazing. It, it really is. Last five years. How about this? Two Elite Eights and a Sweet 16. And we remember last year when they were 2-8 and eight in February in the conference. They went on that great roll, finished it here. 35 and 11 since that day. You know, I, I get the Blue Bloods and the Coach of the Years and, and Bill Self and all of those great coaches. I yeah. understand that. But you can make an argument that the coach of the last decade is Scott Drew because of what he had to repair down in Waco. That goes without saying. I'm not talking about the X and O part of this, but yeah. I'm just saying repairing a program. It's, it's yeah. been unbelievable. It's one of the great rebuilding jobs in, in NCAA history. There's no question. Medford outside now for the Bears. Puts it down on Miles' left hand, yes. Now Medford kind of plays co-pilot to Kenny Cherry. And you watch a year from now when he's a senior, he's going to be one of the better point guards in this league in the country. Three ball, yeah. good for Miles. Oh my, what a future this youngster has. And that was great ball movement again, Brent, through the middle of the zone, and you're right. The Charm City, the Baltimore native, Dexter Miles. Boy, has he come on. What a great opener this is going to be, Fran. It's already shaping up that way. A 4-5 matchup. Wow. Here's Cherry now, handling the ball out on top. Carter, another of the youngsters. You know, Big 12 is great this year. Folks, I got news. It could be even better next year. Oh, man. So many good players returning. Off that dribble, and it's goaltending. Esther Medford. Watch this ball movement now through the middle of the zone. Remember, this is by design. You got the size of Macon against those little guards in the foul line. And Macon does a good job of swinging that ball to the corner. West Virginia moving it around the perimeter and trying to penetrate. And there's a whistle on the entry pass that time, and Gathers picks up the person. <laughs> Gathers rather quiet, friend. Uh, you know, he's missed his only field goal attempt, and he has only one rebound so far in this game. Yeah, the rebounding is the thing that, uh, look at that inside. And they stole it. Great steal by your man right there, Motley. He's another one of those young big guys like the cookie cutters in Waco. They they go against good competition every day. They get better. He redshirted last year. Still only a freshman. Over the top. And Prince was being fronted by Miles. And Miles fouled him. Watch this sneaky steal right here on the inbounds. He just took it right yeah. out of his hands. <laughs> give me that. I think that's just a steal, give me that. not you a long shot. It. Oh, yeah, that's a steal. Just that's grab a shot. shot. <laughs> I think you got to leave. Well, you don't have to leave your feet to block the shot, but he just snatched it. <laughs> I 
Now they're trying to post Prince. Good move there. Doubled, and uh, he's going to come and shoot free throws. You know, Brent, on a nice nightly basis, we see some great coaching. There's six coaches that have coached in the Final Four. Bill Self and Fred Hoiberg, Ron Kruger, great at isolating mismatches. And right there, Bill, uh, Scott Drew had that mismatch with Prince. Yo, Miles picked up his second foul. Yo, he's got eight points for the Mountaineers. So, Huggy had to get him off the floor right now. And that's a, that's a big setback for them. And there's Prince. Looks a little awkward getting to the shot, but the release is smooth. Yeah, and he, and he scores in so many ways. He can score at the rim. He can shoot threes. Gentry pass to Williams, who's yeah. been quiet, and that's his game. I like this. West Virginia's game plan versus the zone, outstanding. They're absolutely getting the ball exactly where they want. Four points for Williams. Open outside now and off the front of the iron offensive rebound by O'Neal. Spin move. Last year, Baylor went on a tremendous run in Kansas City. Made it to the championship game before losing to Iowa State. They came, uh, they had to play in their first round on a Wednesday night. Won three consecutive games, and here they are. The number four seed this year under Coach Scott Drew. And right now they enjoy a two-point lead at the 11-minute mark in Kansas City. right on his whiteboard, 0 for 6 in paint touches in that last stretch. He wants them driving to the lane because that opens up many things, including the drive and kick. He also wants them guarding the big man, Devin Williams, a little better. He's like, hey, why are we giving him so much space to operate? They want him up and under Devin Williams. Rico Gathers off to a slow start is still over on the bench right now. And uh, Motley on a turnaround, Carter skies for the rebound. Some of these little guys can jump out of that gym, Frank. No, they can. They're, they are feisty. These West Virginia guards have, as we mentioned, really grown up this season. Oh, oh nice look. Great entry pass down there. That, that's, man, that's like stealing. Making this all alone, the freshman from Columbus. And West Virginia's got a great game plan versus that zone right now. The big guys have been facilitating the passing. They did a good job of recognizing how to get that play done without gathers around. I, I find Baylor shorthanded underneath. And uh, they jump him out by the midcourt line, and uh, they foul Cherry. That's not where you want to foul anybody. And here comes gathers. Obviously, <laughs> the Baylor coaches are not blind over there, and they, they saw that easy hoop. And they say, get, hit that big let's get the, Hit that number two back let's in get the that tractor trailer back in there. <laughs> That 18 wheeler back in oh, there. Oh, yeah, here we go. <laughs> Sherry just lost it off the dribble. Running wide open. Adrian hands it back to Page. I thought Holton might have been open on it. Under fire, the three ball. And that's a beautiful shot by Javon Carter from Maywood, Illinois, Proviso East High School, 17-14, Mountaineers. You know what's big about that, Brent? He was one for 16 the last two games. And really? He, yeah, and he has to play. He really has to pick up the slack the way Miles has. Playing it awkwardly, but able to save it. Almost turned it. Almost turned it over. Turner was a big, big part of this game. Six for West Virginia early. They've been better late, but now inside. Hello, guess who's back? <laughs> they must have listened to you. Nice. Yeah, I, you can't leave him over the bench, Carl. Yeah, nice drive right here. You see O'Neal so versatile. And Rico gathers. He's in, this is called the dunker spot, Brent. He stays behind the defense. He waits for the drive, and that's his only job is to catch that ball and dunk it. He's going to get a look eventually in professional basketball, you know, because he's such a good rebounder, friend. Yep. He's going to get, you know, he, he reminds me of Barkley, that kind of that wide body, tough guy down low. Uh, but if that doesn't work out, I got a football team for you, my friend. 
Williams. How do you know he doesn't like rugby? <laughs> <laughs> Devin Williams goes hard. Let's check in with Holly. Well, I know Rico Gathers gets a little frustrated that we don't talk about his basketball more, and we're all obsessed with his football, but his body, he looks like a football player. He's never played it, but I talked to him before the game, and I said, hey, I'm going to have Todd McShay, our draft specialist, put together a profile on what your draft stock would be. He's like, I'm okay with that. Cool. O'Neal, by the way. You know, you know what Rico's, you know Rico's going to say? Show me the money. Yeah, I, but, but, I'm, but I'm here to tell you right now, he, he's going to get a look at the NBA. Yeah. He's just too good a rebound. Yeah, that's, he does some, one thing elite that is important. Page smoothly nails it. Uh, Page is a junior from Jamestown, New York. And uh, coming in is uh, Torian Prince. He'll be on the free throw line. You know, when you look around the NFL, Take a look at these fellas. They were they were college basketball players, and and, and look at that. Tony Gonzalez, hell, Hall of Famer. Antonio Gates probably going to be a Hall of Famer for San Diego. Jimmy Graham will be in the discussion if he picks it up with Seattle. Martellus Bennett, Julius Thomas signed a rich contract the other day. Can't remember who it was with, Frank. Somebody will tell me from yep. the studio, but he he left Denver. And, uh, and signed a, a free agent to with Jacksonville, I just told. George Hill's right on that. Yeah, you know what You know what I see in this kid? How about Julius Peppers? And which became a defensive end. Yeah, 6'8", yeah. 275. Julius played college football. And basketball at North yes. Carolina. Yes, I covered yeah, him in basketball. Yep. But uh, Gathers does not play yeah. football. Right. Um, we have to check his hands out. But Shea is probably watching him right now. So he can catch the ball. But I'm, I'm going to tell you folks right now, of all those guys, this guy is the best rebounder of that bunch. Gonzalez was a fine all-around basketball player. I covered him, covered him in Cal. Did you ever coach against him? No, no, but I remember how good a basketball yeah, he player was good, he was. He was a good yep. shooter. But I like what West Virginia is doing. They've done a great job versus this zone. They really have a good game plan. Adrian's wide open. Didn't bury it, but good, good dig out by Williams. And uh, he bumps into uh, O'Neal, and the foul is called on Royce. So there's uh, Staten and Brown sitting over there uh, on the bench. Remember what what Huggy is uh, is saying in an emergency. And so far they've played pretty well without him. Well, they have, and it's what we talked about. These young kids have played all season long in that 12-man rotation, and they were ready to step up, and they they have certainly. Carter with a good pass on the inside. Uh, should have been a clean catch. You know, we've got our media break here. Mountaineers up by a point. Good opener. Big 12 quarterfinals. Camping the military for over 75 years. West Virginia by one. 7.55 to go first half. And Brent, West Virginia has a very good game plan. Versus that 1-1-3 one, one, zone. Remember, those little guards have to guard the high post area. And so what the, what West Virginia does is just put a big guy in there. Throw over the top, good swing to the corner, and then run some of your man-to-man -man stuff. Little pick and roll here on those guards. And watch, watch Macon on the backside get loose. Nice find by Adrian. So lots of things working for West Virginia when they don't turn it over. And Huggins' team has shot 56% to follow up on your point, Fran, of what they're doing. They've also have been much better shooting the three ball. They are three of five, and Baylor's 0 of five. So Baylor hasn't been able to find the long ball yet. And on each of their field goals, there's an assist, nine assists on nine field goals. Yep, and the last five games, Baylor shot 48% behind the arc, and that certainly hasn't manifested itself early in this game. Seven forty-five now in the opening half. Sherry keeping that dribble an awful long time out on top. And I think they tried Shot to lock it down toward ten, and uh, he's basically the yo-yo man. Other guys were falling asleep before they handled it, and uh, Prince nails it. What a, what a great inside-outside game, Torian Prince has. Filled out. He's a big, strong kid. We might put him in the NFL before too long. Right. <laughs> He's got a basketball future as well. Mark Bryles is going to be mad at us. 
Williams, nice, steps out. That, that brings the defense back out. He's only a sophomore, Brent. You like this kid, don't you? Yeah, I do a lot. He is really going to be a good he, He's player. going to be the next gathers in this kind Yeah. You know, I talked to Ryan Spangler from Oklahoma about these guys, and he loves going up against Gathers and Williams. And he said Williams, he thought, was even stronger. Surprised me. Speaking of Gathers, he'll shoot free throws. Now, wait a minute. Call our offensive yeah. foul on that. Yeah. Williams held his Is this ground. a good call? I believe it was. Take, Take a, a look at this. Yeah, he's set. Bad call. Come on, Fran. I disagree. You've got to get there faster. Come on, come on. No. Uh -huh. As long as he's uh, there. <laughs> Fran, you were right. I was wrong. I get him right every now and then. You got that one. You were all over that one. And, and, and the big man got to take a seat with that second personal foul. Last night, Kansas State, they're big men. Gibson and Williams got into foul trouble, and I thought that was the biggest factor of that game, other than the, the way the TCU veterans played, like Anderson. He was spectacular for Coach Johnson last night. Well, they really are doing a good job through the top of that. So look how much size Williams has over uh, Metro. Billy D. Williams stretched it inside, and as the shot clock was going off, Phillip fired it up. So operating without gathers on the inside and a bad pass. Carter stepped into the passing lane, picked it off. Phillip can't get to the rim. Back outside, knocking down the three ball. Billy D. Williams. Sounding a little like Brian's song right there, Billy D. Williams. Uh, Orlando, Florida native. He was a high school teammate of Austin Rivers. Austin Rivers, of course, the son of the coach. Freeman misses the three ball. This has been an impressive performance by West Virginia. And the foul is on Medford, reaching in on that dribble. Um, Baylor just a little out of sync. Yeah, and, and the other thing, West Virginia really doing a good job of attacking the zone. There you see Billy D. Williams, junior college transfer. We didn't see him early in the year because of some injuries, and he gives you just another energetic, live body for that press defense. With 5.15 to go, Coach Drew is hoping that he can get to the intermission without gathers on the floor. So he's got to try to get there and get to that second half with his big man saddled with only two fouls. He didn't want to risk a third one, but if West Virginia starts to rip on him, he might have to change that strategy. And, and you know, Brent, you make a good point. It, nobody, it, there's no coaching handbook that says you have to sit on the bench the rest of the half with two fouls. You know, I, I think you've got to play it, you know, situation by situation. Rolls in for Carter. So Brown and Staten still watching, and the Mountaineers have not needed them. So why would you even think about it? I agree. They're in the NCAA tournament. They're uh, likely to be you know, a five, maybe a four seed. Friendly iron both times for, uh, for Carter, and uh, they build their biggest lead of the game. A five-point advantage right now, and uh, also picked up a personal, personal foul. Adrian. What a great season West Virginia has had, Brent. You think about it. They were 49 and 49 the last three years. I don't think anybody saw this coming. He is. He looked being Bob Huggins, we were just watching. He, he's one of, one of the things about the Big 12 is the number of outstanding coaches we have. And he is one of them. He's one of the best of all time. Man works at his craft, drives his players. And when you finish with him, you are a better basketball player than when you began. And we had a couple of guys transfer who he didn't want to lose. That was late, and yet he, put this team back together again and uh, 
You do not want to draw the Mountaineers in round one or two of the NCAAs. Here's an alert. Well, they play a style that you just can't get ready for unless you play eight on five and practice for three days. As a matter of fact, you probably don't want to draw them in the Big 12. <laughs> How about I'm thinking about it? Yep. <laughs> Carter is going to be just a fine guard. Man. He's got great patience out there. Sees the floor. He's quick. Gets the ball fake that time. Nails the three. Oh, oh my. That freshman from Illinois has got a future. Comes out of a, you mentioned Proviso East, right? Doc Rivers, Rivers. and uh, Michael Finley. Remember Jacob Pullen, how good he was at Kansas State? Yes. Another guy that uh, comes out of that great program. Sherry off the dribble in there. Taylor's searching right nice. now. This should be easy. Motley. And that's another great feed from Royce O'Neal. One of the most valuable underrated players in the conference right there. Royce O'Neal Brent as he can score, rebound, and pass it. And uh, he takes a lot of pressure off those guards with his ability Brian, to find when you get, it. When you get into a conference situation like this and you, and you draw a team right off the top that you're beating twice, is there is there a chance for mentally for the youngsters to say, hey, we beat these guys a couple of not to Human nature. Up. Human nature. You know what, Brent? I think it works the other way. When you've been beaten twice, you know, you kind of redouble your efforts. Got it. You're any kind of competitor, you go, hey, we're not letting this happen again. Got it. Finding the opening man down low. Can't do anything with it. Williams has been the big out by the free throw line and now pays the three. see no gathers, offensive rebound. And finally Motley comes away with it. And here's Cherry. Oh, wide open, Medford. Beautiful, beautiful fake and drive. Very smooth. The junior college transfer had a Tucson, Arizona. He won a state title at Amphi High. This is just the beginning of the quarterfinals for the Big 12. What a, what a day we've got. I expected this matchup, didn't you? Yes, indeed. And there's a three by Payne. Yep. Remember we said early in January, nobody had ever heard of these guys. Right. You know, these guys were all under the radar, Juco transfers, not highly recruited high school stars. Boy, they've been good. Cherry back at him. Rattles around. And a put back by Motley. And look at that kid run, 6'9". Talk about guys like Corey Jefferson, Epe Udo, Isaiah Austin. This time is coming as well, only a freshman. Stay down and uh, underneath uh, there is a going to be a foul on Macon. Number 45 picked up the personal. So we've got a timeout at the 234 mark. A dandy, the four versus the five. They'll be wandering over here. They'll be in good voice. You know that beer is more than a breakfast drink. And uh, they'll come on over to the uh, to the Sprint Center and they'll watch their Jayhawks, the number one seed in game two against the TCU team. And then tonight, uh, Fran, you and I can go to McFadden's and let Dave Fleming and Miles Simon do the last two games. Okay. Yeah, yeah but you know, because doing four games, this is hard work. No, I know. Well, uh, Dave and Miles are. Yeah, I think so. Two is hard enough. I listened know? to them last night. They did an outstanding <laughs> yes, they job. Did. And uh, here we've got the number five seed, West Virginia, leading Baylor by a point, 34-33, the first of four Big 12 quarterfinal games. Final two minutes now. Fran Fraschilla, Holly Rowe, I'm Brent Musburger. Glad you're along with us today. March Madness in full swing now. Bump and grind. Nothing doing at all. Oh, clear, clear in space is Ish Wainwright. Get out of here. I grew up in this town. You know, in Kansas City. <laughs> Lots of physical play right now, but officials have let both teams play. Well, Foul is uh, O'Neal attacked. <laughs> Medford, <laughs> Medford also is looking up at Carter saying, hey man, play was over. <laughs> play was over out here. You put your finger on it. A little football breaking out here. Yeah. 
Well, both of these teams have really hung their hat on great competitiveness. You know, for a while, Baylor was thought of under Scott Drew as a finesse team. But when you look at guys like O'Neal, Motley, and Gathers, and Prince, oh, no. you know, uh-uh, no more. They're football teams, they're finesse teams. <laughs> <laughs> O'Neal ties it at uh, 34, make it and pick up that first goal goes over to the sideline. Football, they got to replace that uh, great linebacker, Hager, Britt Hager. Mm -hmm. His dad played at Texas, and he played at Baylor. Yes, sir, and there's a quarterback they have to replace. Yes, they do. Mr. Petty. Somehow, I think they have somebody ready to go. Yeah, they usually do have <laughs> that system, don't they? Huh? There's our free throw situation. Baylor getting to the line a lot more. They lead it now by a point because of their free throws. And Baylor on an impressive 10-3 run right now. Let's see what they're... And this, of course, remember, this is what gathers on the bench. That's what's even more impressive about this. For the lead, no. And Wainwright is Kyle Williams has jumped into it. Yeah, Wainwright has done a great job. This Wainwright, the top 75 player. You mentioned he grew up here. Brent, he went to Montrose Christian High School, a place that produced a guy by the name of Kevin Durant. Played for a terrific coach and Stu Vetter, but uh, Ish is back home in Kansas City. Look at that. I mean, we may put him on the football field, too. Yeah, We're going to have half this team on the Baylor football team. I'm impressed by the size. Yeah. I mean, I cannot, didn't Baylor and Texas get at it on the sideline on one of their games? They I had a little. I don't want to misspoke. It was a little point. dust up, as we say in Texas. There's a few big bodies on yes. those two teams, yep. mate. Uh, it was a dust up. A little dust up over there. <laughs> Nobody threw punches. We got Motley, and he's a Houston kid. Played in the same AAU team with the two Harrison twins. And you see that, see all those bodies, good size athletes that Scott Drew has. What uh, what does Joey Brackett say? We've got seven Big 12 teams headed to the uh, the big dance. At this point, it, Texas helped themselves last night. They held serve, beating Texas Tech. West Virginia sort of stalled down here in the last two and a half minutes going to the intermission. Yeah. Great play by Baylor with Gathers over on the bench with two fouls. You know what they've done, Brent? They were a lot of ball pressure out top now. See how more, much more yeah, active they are? movement. You're yep. exactly right. Yep. Look at that movement. Out on top. They picked it up. They have picked it up. They're forcing shot clock decisions here. Page got to go. Yep. And in underneath, foul is going to go again. So there is a, there's Joey Brackettson. He seeds him out, right? I think Oklahoma State's got a huge, huge opportunity today. They'll play a team that's beaten them four straight times in state. Bedlam, Bedlam continues yep. tonight. Yep. Motley picks up foul number three. Now that's key because Motley was replacing Gathers, helping out underneath Wainwright has done great duty but now two of the big men are in foul trouble for baylor and you know what gathers is back in on offense there he is i wonder if scott drew will platoon him yeah, really well, he got smart. one of his fouls down here on offense yeah. remember yes the offensive foul jerry thought about trying to go over the top of the and he'll instead take the open look three and too many whistles. Too many whistles. Yep. Well, we got a technical foul. Jay Sean Page didn't stop play. He was getting some extra shooting work in, and Mark Whitehead teed him up. Take a look now. This is this is unique right here. The whistle blows. Well, you know, in uh -huh. fairness to the youngster who went up. Oh, he can't. See, I didn't, didn't hear the wasn't whistle. Wasn't he under pressure? I mean, if you're breaking out like that, do you, do you know for sure that there's no? Been a, no, I didn't hear the whistle right away either. Yeah, I, and the young man just continued on the well, hustle. Let me play. take a look at this. Yeah. Because I think it was the second man in here. Watch. Let's, let's watch what happens. So that, no technical there. There's the technical. Yeah, I. you know what? Mark Whitehead's a heck of an official. I don't yeah. get that. I don't understand that. That's going to be... Wouldn't you just walk over to him and say, hey, 
Yeah. I mean, I don't know. And that's what Mark, he's a very good official. And, yeah. uh, There's no question. And, and because of that, Huggins listening, and he said, I didn't see it, he told him. So, and that Cherry misses frequently. <laughs> the whistle took I, place early. Yeah. But I go back to what I was saying before that whistle. Too many yeah, whistles. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I do think, and I said this last week, Brian, I thought at the end of the regular season, officials around the country, by and large, were exhausted, and their judgment suffered a little bit, and they definitely were short-fused. We saw that in games at uh, Iowa State, Oklahoma. We saw that in the uh, West Virginia, Kansas game. I made the point that after the end of the regular season in the Big 12, the conference ought to mandate that they take three or four days off before the tournament starts. What started it all was a foul on Baylor, and uh, that's why we see Jonathan Holton moving to the free throw line. The uh, junior from Miami transferred from Miami Junior College, Palm Beach State. That down by you? It is. Yeah. They had some good baseball teams over there, uh, two, three years, Frank. 38 36 right now. Baylor with the ball. Last shot time. Shot clock is turned off, so they'll bring it down to around 10, I would imagine, and then go for the last shot with their two-point lead. And a little 1-3-1 zone here to finish out the half. See if they get out of it. Now they're sliding back to a 2-3. Go time. And it is blocked beautifully by Watkins. What a fine block that was by Watkins here on the on the final second shot by Baylor. Now, what's occurring here measures against the first two games. Both Baylor wins over the Mountaineers. So here we go. This the first of four quarterfinals, Big 12 in Kansas City. And uh, Miles, who was outstanding in the first half, didn't miss from the field. He, along with Carter, picked up the slack with uh, both Staten and Brown out with injuries missing from this game and if you listen carefully to Huggy and there's a you know Cherry couldn't get it Carter got it back and he stole it and then stole it back and the miss from the corner and the rebound pulled down by Medford nothing doing and uh, the Mountaineers will come back and two quick turnovers by Baylor and then a foul by Medford on um, Williams as he attacked the rim Keep your eye on that Baylor zone. They're going to have to be more aggressive out top and guard the basketball with more toughness because West Virginia really did a good job in that first half of playing through the paint. So Williams at the free throw line. He had eight points in the first half along with Miles and Carter. And the three Mountaineers. And now he's the leading scorer with a nine. And of course Williams in and gathers led this league in double doubles and gathers with a huge advantage over everybody now this young man's only a sophomore from cincinnati great student as well and uh, his next two years in morgantown are going to be outstanding now little one three one zone look let's see if they slide it back a little bit they went zone at the end of the first half Brent. We were tied for three and a half minutes in the first half, and now we're dead up to 38. Stepping to the corner and missing the three, but there's a foul underneath our first foul of the, of the second half. We have about 23 fouls called in the, uh, in the first half, exactly 13 against West Virginia, 10 against Baylor. Well, West Virginia, remember now, because of the way they play, they foul as much as anybody in college basketball. It's just the style they play. There's a lot of West Virginia fans saying right now, oh, we don't foul that much, but they have the depth to do it. Tipped out of bounds by Adrian. It's interesting, Brent. West, uh, Baylor in the last five games shooting 48% from three. Today, one for ten behind the line. And Scott threw another down. Yeah. The we have been 
see how the Mountaineers have extended that defense out on top. O'Neal tries. There's their first three ball. Yep. Watch this guy now. This guy can really, really knock him in. He's so versatile. He shot 46% from three this year. They have four guys out there that have made over 43s this year. Williams again, 11 for Williams. How good has he been in that mid to high post area? Brent, that's the one thing he does that gathers, doesn't. Gathers back on the free throw line. Foul by Holton. Now here's what I've seen of that West Virginia zone early. Remember, this is not a team that plays a ton of zone. There are some holes back there that Baylor has got to be able to exploit with good ball movement. Yeah, we talked about Baylor winning five of their last six games in the Big 12 coming down the stretch. West Virginia won four of their last six. So they finished strong, too, making sure that they're going to get into the big dance after the Big 12 championship here in Kansas City. And Huggy with a little coaching page before he sends him onto the floor. You gotta have little ego when you play in this style because you're gonna be constantly coming and going from the bench. You're gonna play in three and four minute spurts at the most, and everybody has bought into that style this year. Which, of course, reminds us of the National Hockey League. I like it. Line shifts. They come hard on Williams when he stepped out this time. Oh, Holton yeah. down low, up over Gathers, who didn't want his third foul. Yes, and a great delivery by Devin Williams, who's essentially been the Mountaineers' point guard today versus that zone in the middle of the lane. So we are tied again here in our opening quarterfinal match. TCU and the Kansas Jayhawks are coming up next. Cherry pull up Jay. And that's tracked down by O'Neal. You know, watch here. They're still in that sort of a matchup zone. If they move this ball quickly, they can get it to the baseline. Prince, great delivery to yep. Gathers. What a great pass by Torian Prince. Yep. And, and remember, Brent, this is a pressing man-to-man -man team most of the year. I'd say they play zone 10% of the time. It's not their strength. Good little officials time out here. Carter going over for. Looks like he's kind of limping and uh, he's going he's going to be replaced for the time being by Philip. Carter being tended to remember now Staten and Brown are both out. They can ill afford to lose still another guard friend. Well, they, they have great depth back there, but it doesn't play into the way they want to press and run with three guys on the bench. Miles, who had a hot hand before he picked up his second foul in the first half. Page from the corner. 45-44 on the page three. Mountaineers back on top. And that ball went through Devin Williams again. Page quickly getting over on Cherry. The drive kicked back outside to Prince, but a whistle. That's going to That's a three ball. Yep. And he was fouled. How about that? Out of nowhere. Score the basket. Good rhythm shot by Prince. The foul never affected him. Watch this. There's the swing, the drive and kick. He's in his motion. Oh, I see what he did. He put his hand right through, right through his face. Now, I'm going to tell you in the rule book. Go ahead. That can be a team. Go ahead. You can't. You cannot put. You cannot wave your hand in a shooter's face like that. But I think the foul, was, the regular personal foul, was the judicious decision. And because it was a dead ball, I think that's what a dead ball means. They get the ball back. Intercepted. Outlet.
spin, Miles left hand, and he's on the free throw line. So we've got a time to basket. Devin Williams, number five. He picks up this personal, trying to screen gathers out. It's not Holton for the hand guarding. It is on number five, Mark Whitehead looking in. So the basket counts, and the foul is against Williams, number three. Fran? Well, then you have the foul at this end, so Miles will shoot two free throws. After the play, there was a little jawing. Double technical fouls were uh, assigned to, uh, looks like, Miles right there. Williams picked up his. And O'Neal. There's, he's going to sit with the third foul, Brent, so we'll shoot the two free throws and the double technical fouls offset, so play resumes at the point of the two free throws. So again, to, to get you up to date, there was no foul on Jonathan Holton jumping out on the three-point shooter, but Williams in low picked up number three, and that is a big, big storyline. Miles was fouled on the shot. That's why he's at the free throw line, and then as Fran told you, the double T, they offset. Good shooter, Fran. What a, what a fine yeah. future. He's uh, yeah. shooting for the tie right now. And he attacked that rim pretty strong. He, well, you know what? These Baltimore kids, Brent, they are really tough kids. He comes out of... I learned uh, watching Ray Lewis. Yeah, you, you know, he goes to... He came from the same high school. Tavon Austin, the great wide receiver. Oh, now in the NFL, same high school. Now, I used to love coaching Baltimore kids because they had that chip on their shoulder. And it comes from not being from New York or D.C. They always have something to prove on the high school level. O'Neal attacks and the foul is underneath. I, I like that strategy. I used to tell my team that when there were a lot of whistles called and there was, you know, a couple technical fouls called, drawn back and forth, drive it to the basket because the officials want to clean this game up. And at the free throw line, Baylor 12 of 16. West Virginia is only 7 of 10. Watkins replaces Macon for Coach Huggins and the Mountaineers. And Al Freeman. Takes a seat. Pressure right now. Let's see, a little one-three-one maybe. Looks like it. Phillip brings the ball up on Cherry, and then they float back into that zone. Here's Page again from the opposite corner. He's nailed back-to-back -back threes for him. Keeping the Mountaineers tied. He's hit half of his three-point attempts. How about this, Brent? Eight of 14 for the Mountaineers behind the arc today. Made a living out there. Yeah. Making up for their free throw uh, discrepancy. So you see West Virginia still in that zone. Shot clock winding down. Entry pass, turn around, got the bounce. Field goal for Prince. And I think Prince has scored from to all three areas today at the rim in the middle of the lane and also behind the arc really versatile scorer giving the Bears a two-point lead here at the 1429 mark oh elbow and there's an elbow foul yep he popped him let's see now they, I think they got to go fill about on they'll have to take a look at this one yep. Well, that was just a shoulder is what it was. Yeah, it, Cherry did a pretty good job. Yes, yeah. Pretty good acting job on this. Let's take it. Yeah, he went, he went with the shoulder. Hopefully this won't take long. Certainly the... Uh, here it is right here. Philip is under pressure. Cherry jumps him and... Uh, well, I tell you, that's, 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 there's not much there. I get why they called it, but uh, Philip really never violated his own space on that, I thought. It was just two bodies coming together, but you know, it looked worse than it was. 
All right, we had enough review, monitor reviews today, Brent, huh? <laughs> For sure. Let's play some hoop. Okay. Kind of a one-three-one zone right now. They're matching up. You see, anytime you see guys in the zone pointing and talking, it means they're matching up in areas, almost playing man-to-man. -man. Over the top, wide open, yep. and stuffing it is Prince. Nicely read. Yep, that's called America's Law play. Everybody has that in their arsenal. And pulled it off at the right time. So here at the 1350 mark, we've got a media timeout. I'm in here, having won five of their last six, they could get on another run. They've got an impressive team here right now. Yeah, there's no question, Brent. They have that unique zone defense that, by the way, West Virginia's done a good job with today. They got size. They have guard play. And it's, uh, they're just emblematic of how competitive the league has been top to bottom. Cherry jumps all over Phillip. Carter back for the Mountaineers. Phillip outside, the three rattles out. Battle for it is Cherry. Oh, Headman up front now, and Prince on the drive comes through. Hello, Torian Prince. And there's an injury to a West Virginia player. That's Holton. Now watch, uh, watch an inadvertent arm swing here by Watch O'Neill. Battle for the rebound. He just, he went down. Didn't see him. It was open, we are told, and it was incidental. Had, had the hand been closed... Yeah, okay. but if it's... In, but you know I'm, what? I get, I get your first point. If it's... Even after if it's rebounding, in, I guess yeah. they're giving a little bit of a pass. But, uh, so you can do anything, right? Yeah, well... On the active... Oh, well, it was just an active rebound. Out here, I knocked maybe. three teeth out, but it was an active <laughs> rebound. <laughs> uh, Pull up jump shot. Holly, what is it for made in that rule? Well, I just heard the officials go over to Bob Huggins and explain to him, hey, Bob, it's not a foul. He was just going up for the rebound. It was in the active rebound and incidental contact. Wow. Not to hold him. <laughs> Fleming missing, and uh, we got a foul called in underneath. And uh, let's hope that soon a basketball game breaks out yeah. here in Kansas City. Well, what's happening is both coaches now are posturing with the officials and so the officials are going to make sure they call the next three or four they see hopefully they'll let the guys play on a little bit after that now prince with three fouls devin williams of west virginia we had a nice little game going and uh, williams is back let me see how many players have we got with three i've george hill just handed me a card we've got six players in this game a three foul so unfortunately it means that the game could be decided by you know what. Never anything we like to see. Page is stopped underneath. And gathers. Get out of here, little guy. <laughs> come on. Swatted that nat away. Come on, come on. And you see West Virginia staying in that zone. It's something they didn't use much until the very last possession. Now they're switching out. Baylor spreads the floor. Coming down toward 10 seconds. Freeman off the dribble, pulls it up on the side, and uh, good, good screening out gathers in underneath by West Virginia. Yeah, that was exactly the shot Bob Huggins wanted to force. Yeah, we'll have a few whistles here the next minute or so. Tonight. Hopefully it'll clean itself up, and we'll have basketball in the last 12 minutes. Person. Carter is still limping. You know, he's back on the floor. And here comes there's Perry Ellis, who is, we are told is not going to play. And the Jayhawk doubling up Marquette in this game. And then Illinois, really tough loss against Michigan. They may be heading to the NIT. Brent, Fran? All right, Chris, thank you very much. And here it is, 55-51. Baylor, the four seed, leading West Virginia. The five seed by four, 11-46. Remaining. Entry pass and coming down with Page. Page has been lethal from that corner. He either shoots the three or drives down that baseline. Baylor Brent 67% inside the arc. The threes haven't gone, but they've done a good job of attacking the inside of that West Virginia defense.
Gathers comes out high for the screen for Cherry. There's O'Neal. Got a size advantage on Page. Gonna drive on him. Gets help. Baseline. That opens up the outside man. And it would not go down, however, for Motley. Yeah, Motley lost control of that ball. Good move, but couldn't finish. Page is again camp low, this time right side. Carter off to the right. Yanked down by Williams. So playing with three fouls, Devin Williams puts it back in and ties it. Devin Williams has tied this game twice in the second half. Once at the free throw line, and now with a huge offensive rebound. It's a different team with number five on the floor. When they get the ball into the paint today, Pretty good number, I'd say. West Virginia shooting 52% against that defense, and Baylor shooting 50%. Oh, there it is. Ah! Got it into Gathers, and just what Coach said, get it into the paint, you'll get on the free throw line. It's a well-executed cross screen inside. Caught West Virginia napping, and Gathers will get himself, too. Gathers with six points for the game and four rebounds. So for the most part, West Virginia's done a good job. Of course, Gathers was in foul trouble and didn't play a lot of minutes in the first half. Young man had committed to St. John's and Steve Lavin. Even though he's from Louisiana, then changed his mind, stayed closer to home. Remember Tweedy Carter, who we enjoyed watching play? Absolutely. Same high school coach. He had a great career here. Scott Drew's first McDonald's All-American. With a familiarity with Gathers. Staten and Brown have not played for West Virginia today. Tipped, but into Page's hand. And just watch those big guys in blue work through the middle of that zone when they can. There is Page knocking down the three ball wow. again. That's three here in the second half. You start making your threes if you're West Virginia. That's 9 of 17 now. That changes the whole dynamic. Nip and tuck. Gathers. Left hand. Didn't get the roll. Page goes in. Digs it out. Big plays at both ends. Gave West Virginia the lead and then went and got a defensive rebound. And remember, Brent, West Virginia only shoots 32% behind the arc. So this has been perfect today versus that zone. Attacking on the inside with the left hand, and it bounces in. Williams was in there underneath. We'll see who gets credit for that. Uh, he raised the, the, the guy smart, Williams. He raised his hand. I want to make sure to score. No, it was me. It was me. I got the two. <laughs> 60 to 57. Devin Williams now with 16 points and six rebounds, having a big afternoon. Well, we talked about Devin Williams a bunch today, Brent. Only a sophomore. This league is full of young players like Devin Williams. His versatility versus that zone outstanding. Not just the passing through the high post, those short jumpers and then scoring and rebounding inside as well. And then take a look right here. Who gets this tip in right here? Oh, yeah, the big fella. I got it. I'll take it. <laughs> I'm not, not totally sure about that one. That's okay. That's okay. But you're right. He raised his hand. He raised his hand first. I got there first. <laughs> Holly Rowe, what's up? Well, watching Devin Williams muscle his way past Rico Gathers to get that tip in, that is 530 pounds of those men pushing each other around all day. Devin Williams can bench press or can leg press 700 pounds 15 times. Rico Gathers, on the other hand, he can get 2,500 watts on their Kaiser leg press machine. Those are two really strong guys. I feel like I'm watching a Transformers movie a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Gathers will be watching that movie himself, Holly, over on the bench here shortly as uh, West Virginia with a three-point lead. Nine minutes to go, and there's a foul called, and it 
goes against Motley, and that is number four on Motley. Yeah, the dribble handoff, they said he moved. That's always a dangerous play for a big guy on the offense because they tend to move and not come to a stop. Page not on the floor right now. And Williams backing in, and Cherry is there, and they're going to give the foul to Cherry. Well, the answers are coming our way on uh, ESPN Sunday at 7 Eastern. You get Sports Center updates beginning at 5:30. Who's in? Who's out? We'll just see how accurate Joey Frackets is going to be. You know, he, he is usually very accurate. Very right accurate. Right and once he's accurate, we check in with the guys out west and see how the whole tournament shapes up. Tried to take him to Vegas once, but he would go with me. <laughs> Jerry <laughs> now free throw. You'd be dangerous. <laughs> You'd be dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> Wide open. Yep. Stuff it in for Jonathan Motley. You don't want to give that up. Bob Huggins shaking his head, but another good look by Cherry. One point game at the 819 mark. It's been nip and tuck all the way. Shot clock cranks down towards 10. Holton flashes, bounce pass. Carter, they gotta go. They're down to five. Phillip off the dribble. And pretty Jay. How about that? The shot clock. Only a sophomore Tariq Phillip out of Brooklyn, New York. Spend time in junior college. Yeah, you guys from Brown. I got to take care of those guys from <laughs> Canarsie, okay? <laughs> Here's Jerry now. Pull up at his end and knocks it down into one point game. Got Seven it. and a half minutes, and here we go, folks. Yeah, you got to know the scouting report on him, Brent. That's his sweet spot. That elbow jumper going right makes about 50% of those on the season. Phillip for the three, long three under pressure that time. Out of bounds, but it's West Virginia basketball. That's last by Baylor after the timeout. Mountaineers will have possession. Uh, here's your elbow shots. Huh? Absolutely, yep. Take a look now. Kenny Cherry, when things are in dire straits, he knows to head right to that elbow jumper. That's sweet. Sweet spot. Uh, Jayhawk fans are here in... Uh, uh, Holly, uh, what's the very latest on Perry Ellis? Well, Bill Self has said that he will not play today against TCU. When I talked with Coach Self yesterday, he said if there is any reason that Perry is uncomfortable at all, we're not going to risk it. If they are able to advance, he said it's possible he could play in their next game. Perry did practice full speed yesterday, but they were concerned if he would be sore today after that activity. He must have been sore this morning because they have shut him down for today. Okay. And, uh... West Virginia turning it over, and Baylor makes a play. Pay for it as Prince nails a three ball, and they lead it 64-62. He was the sixth man of the year in the league, but everybody knows he's a starter who comes off the bench. 18 today, the leading scorer for Baylor. Of course, you hated Christian Leitner, who made one of the most incredible shots in NCAA tournament history. Sunday at 9 p.m. Frank Frischola, did you hate Christian Leitner? I never had to play against him, so I have to say <laughs> that I didn't hate him. I might have disliked him, but what an unbelievable college career he had. You unbelievable. Know, I, I honestly think that J.J. Reddick was hated more by opponents than been. Christian Leitner. Yeah, but, but whatever. Christian Leitner's teammates didn't always like him. He was that competitive. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> Whipping it around now is West Virginia driving for the tie. Tap, tap again. Gonna get it this time. Deadlocked at 64. Hey, Brent, let me take you back to the beginning of the game. If I would have told you without Staten and Brown, just think of how well those young guards have played today without two starters out there. They've done a great job. And gathers, drives in for the Baylor lead at the 613 mark. Buckle up. We're coming down the stretch. And this is exactly the kind of basketball we've seen all season in this league. Hand-to-hand -hand combat. 
And a foul is going to be called. O'Neal was reaching in, and he committed the personal that time. Nobody yet in the double bonus, eh? That's four fouls on Royce O'Neal. Motley's got four, O'Neal's got four, and Macon at the foul line has four. It's another one of those promising young players, freshmen out of Columbus, Ohio. Missing that front end, gathers skies for the rebound. You see who Baylor elects to go through. Chariot pull up elbow. Not this time, but gathers an offensive rebound. Won't go down, and O'Neal is fouled. And on the free throw line, he'll shoot two. Boy, what a quick jump by Gathers, and he was off balance when he shot it, Brent. But here comes Royce O'Neal. Remember, the leading rebounding team in the country, so a missed shot is really a pass to one of these guys. Look at the effort right there. And by the way, West Virginia is the fourth best offensive rebounding team in the country, so you're talking about lots of contact inside. That's going to signal the return of number five for West Virginia. Williams trots back out. Adrian comes with him now. He's got to get a little more size down. He's been the man today for the Mountaineers. Everybody straight in. Both coaches, two timeouts left. Wainwright, he played very well. Number 24 did for Baylor in that first half. Look at that chest, it looks like body armor. There's some big folks out here today. Carter brings it up for West Virginia. They trail it by three. Page, the gunner, is not on the floor right now. Miles is. Here's Holton, tries to feed underneath and knocked out of bounds by Prince. And Miles, he hit a three early in this game. Let's see what Bob Huggins has here. 13 seconds to go in the shot clock. Throw in from Carter into Miles' hands. Down to 10 now on the shot clock. Miles, there's his third three of the game and his first miss. And Williams fouled on the rebound. Prince. Prince with four for Baylor. Make him a four for West Virginia. And a host of fellows with three. That P, the P and the whistles are going to wear out by the end of the game. Right? <laughs> I wonder if they have to get a new whistle. Like, <laughs> how often? <laughs> Tomorrow when they do this. I'm going to find out. <laughs> One point game. I haven't seen a lot of full court pressure today from West Virginia. Prince Steve's gathers who's on the line. Williams, I believe, got him. Yes, he did. So now Williams is saddled with four fouls. And there's another example of Baylor getting the ball into the paint. Something that Scott Lewis preached today. And they have done the Bears a very good job. Huggins continues to substitute. And he'll bring Williams out right now. And uh, Huggins was unhappy with number five when he came by him on that. He, he thought that he should have let Gathers go on that play yes. rather than pick up number four. Yeah, you know what? He didn't do his work early, so at that point, you got to let him score. And Scott Drew is platooning Ish Wainwright and Royce O'Neal, who has the four foul, so he's saving O'Neal for offense. So Macon is the big fella out there for West Virginia with Williams on the bench. Carter with a deep three rattled out and Prince 
with a terrific defensive rebound. Reached up over the top to snag it. One point basketball game inside of the five minute mark. With the ball in Cherry's hands. He's the Baylor leader. Carter right with him. Cherry's more comfortable going right. No Carter question. They're yeah. letting him go. Now he slips through with a screen. Comes to the open man. Loose ball. Picked up. Wrap around. Tap. No. West Virginia clears. And now they can take the lead. Page is back. Stolen bad pass by Mills. And losing control. Gathers. Follows. That's making something out of a bad play. Absolutely, and it's not a travel because he's allowed to fumble the ball. That's what Terry Oglesby's tell, telling Huggins, but that's just luck right there. Fortunate bounce for Baylor. Baylor up three. Page is the three-point marksman for the Mountaineers trying to get open. Uh, another, another and now turnover. they've turned it over again. And driving in for the layup is Lester Medford, the junior from Tucson. Both. A five-point lead for the Bears at the 313 mark. Yeah, what a both. huge drive here. Yeah, both freshmen, Brent. It was it, it was Miles first, then Carter, with a chance to take the lead. Take a look. Now this ball has too much air on it. Look how long it had to go. And then you see the drive right here. He's allowed to fumble that. And there's the finish. With authority, and then Carter just coughs it up right here. He just slips out of his hand. And you see Medford, who's really an underrated player. Well, remember now, Staten and Brown are on the bench. Staten and Brown have not played in this game because of injuries. And what turned this around were back-to-back -back turnovers. As you see, Staten there scratching over his right eye, out with an injury, Brown next to him. And it really told right there in that sequence, Frank. Yeah, there, there's no question. And when you saw that Baylor has more points off turnovers today, that tells you something because that's not, that's very unusual for a West Virginia team. And Williams back on the floor with four personal fouls. He's carried the load, got into foul trouble. He'll awkwardly jump shot, gathers with control for Baylor. Cherry will bring it down. The Bears are in control right now. And they will milk clock right here. Don't, don't be surprised if they use all 35 seconds. Watch Cherry now, Brent. You know which direction he likes to go. Wainwright has been the secret weapon. He's number 24 circling back. With 10 on the uh, shot clock, Cherry puts it down, drives in, gives it to Gathers, and that's Williams is fouled out of the game. That's a huge moment in this game. Williams has just fouled out of this game. Down low, he's demanding the basketball on him. When you take a look at the baseline, Watch number two. Watch number two now. Away from the ball. Get it over here. Get it over here. Get it to me. And Williams is gone. Yeah. And there's a perfect example, Brent, of Williams not being ready. He didn't do his work early. He was standing straight up, flat-footed, and he's going to sit now. And Gathers has no offensive game to speak of. It's better, but he's great on that baseline, anticipating penetration. He is better than he was, but his game is around the rim. You know, he picked up two quick fouls, friend. Mm -hmm. He still has two fouls. He's played the second half without fouling anybody, and now with Williams on that bench over here, it's a lot easier underneath for number two. The big fellow right now, 14 points and seven rebounds. His number five watches him, but uh, Williams was a man with 18 points today and seven rebounds. And so uh, they've lost their leader. And Page has been quiet. He's knocked down four three balls for the Mountaineers. He's lurking over there. Now you see him, see him go back to the left side, that corner. He wants it, but quickly they attack him defensively. They don't want 
Zero loose and uh and they got a foul on Prince who they said bumped. That's his fifth. Yep. So now we've got our second player fouled out. They had a good trap set up in the corner. Well, we knew it was going to be ugly when all these fouls were being called, and it is. Well, it's a style that works for West Virginia because they foul a lot. They attack the basket, so they get you to foul a lot. And it's a formula that's worked famously this year for the Mountaineers as they head to the NCAA tournament, regardless of the outcome of this game. One more whistle and some of our fans are going to watch a spring training game. <laughs> <laughs> Page is at the free throw line, outstanding shooter, 16 points today, but this is his first free throw. So the 17 points, a new career high for the young man from Jamestown, New York. From where is Jamestown? Up, up, up in western New York State. Uh, Played, played his high school ball there. He told me yesterday he grew up in the Bronx and moved up to Jamestown and went to junior college. Yeah. And he picks up a personal foul on O'Neill. So O'Neill coming up at the other end. Both teams, a double bonus right now inside of two minutes. And of course, college basketball live will be coming up and then we'll be back here with TCU and Kansas. Nice job by TCU and holding off Kansas State last night. Frank Johnson. That's the good news. The bad news is now you Kansas. draw the Jayhawks. Yeah. Who they have played very competitively, I might add. But first of all, Fort Worth. Yes, they did. Frank Johnson's done a great job. They got their 18th win today. Chase Connor. A little bit of a long-range marksman. No question. In. Yeah. In West Virginia. You know, you were back home in Jupiter on a Saturday afternoon when uh, Chase Connor went into... I, Ames, Iowa knocked down three straight threes in That's the second right. half. Remember that? Yes. So this guy can, you know, and he did it cold, just like this situation. So watch out for him. Seven-point advantage. You can see the difference at the free throw line. Baylor knocking down 21, and Coach said, get to that line. We had him over there in that huddle. Carter, three ball. No battle for the rebound, and the... Uh, Foul is going to go against West Virginia. That's on Page. And they'll come down and shoot at the other end. And when you put the four shooters out there, Brendan, you give up that offensive rebounding, but you got to take that chance. And right now the odds are not in the Mountaineers' favor. So West Virginia, even if they lose here today, Joe Lenardi says they'll be one of the seven teams from the Big 12 headed on in. To the big dance. Wainwright, Kansas City lad. And this will make it three in a row, and there's Mama. She's happy. Oh, yeah. She not only gets to watch him play, she gets to see her boy. That's it. In his hometown. Yeah, all right. <laughs> Let's go dancing. And now it's about trying to get open for threes, but Baylor's going to extend that defense. Page. Rattles out, gathers Skye's rebound. Baylor, minute 19 away from advancing to the semifinal tomorrow. If they get there, they'll play the winner of the Jayhawks and the Horn Frogs. Kansas and TCU in our second quarterfinal game here today. Minute left for the Bears who came into this having won five of their last six. This will make a six of their last seven. Hottest team in a Big 12. O'Neill's swatted away. Macon with a great job. And a foul is going to go against Cherry. Scott Drew doesn't need that foul right there. And Cherry was trying to do some picking. Yeah. You know, if there's one good... One other good thing we saw today, Brent, from West Virginia was that Juwan Staten was warming up before the game, and that may bode well for him being back next week. So why would he warm him up? 
Why would Coach Huggins warm him? You know, I think he wants to make sure that the basketball committee sees him out there and that there is a realistic chance of getting him back. That won't hurt their seed. This is a very dangerous team with Brown and Staten back. So Bob Huggins has been through this situation a few times in okay. his career. So the committee is uh, sure. they're meeting this weekend there in Indianapolis, That's right? Joe Castiglione, the fine athletic director of Oklahoma. He's a member of the committee. Right. He's down there watching watching the action. He'll be watching his Sooners tonight in Bedlam against Oklahoma State. And so, uh, uh, Joe, show the committee. This is Staten right here. We, we want the committee to see this. He's fine, Joe. Don't, don't hurt the West Virginia seed, folks. He's okay. <laughs> That's what we've been told, and we'll, we'll, we'll stick with that story. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Well, if, if they if they play the way they're capable with that full court pressure, they will annoy somebody in the tournament. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, they're going to be in a maybe two people. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> they're capable of annoying a couple people. Yeah. I, you know, <laughs> we're going to have a lot of teams in for the Big 12. I don't know that there's a Final Four team in this conference, folks, but beware them in the first round. Okay, they they're, they're an honorary bunch out of the Big 12 this year. <laughs> Deep three from Page, and there's Gathers again. With yeah. Still another, with another rebound. Well, remember, Friend, it says that George Hill, our stats man, it says our battery is low on this on this stats monitor. Let's let's, let's get you, in between games. We gotta get we gotta get a new battery. In this. Or we keep our stats guy. I can, come on. <laughs> That's why I'll, I'll take human error anytime over these machines here. <laughs> you can't be without George. He's too yeah. valuable. So Virginia winner in the ACC this afternoon, Fran. I don't think there's much question. They're headed for a, uh, a one seed, right? I, I think it's heading that way, but you know what? If they meet up with Duke and there's some, you know, discussion about which ACC oh, team or okay. both, you know, okay. both are po uh, very possible, I think. Right? You know, Kentucky's a lot. Right. I think Arizona's a lot. And then you got Villanova. Yeah, Villanova if they win their tournament, no question. Miles comes up. And O'Neal, final 14 seconds. Baylor headed back to the semifinal. Remember, they made it all the way to the championship game last year before they lost to Iowa State. So Scott Drew and his coaching staff with another outstanding job this year. Their fifth Big 12 championship semifinal in the last seven years. Outstanding. Rico gathers, pulls his game back together in the... Uh, in the second half, and the Bears march on. What do you think, Fran, about Baylor? They are a tough, feisty team. They've got good size in depth inside. Their guard plays very good. They got four guys who've knocked down 43s or more this year. And Brent, they're now 36 and 11 since we remember early last February when they were 2 and 8 in the Big 12. And that includes a Sweet 16 run 